I'm with the truck ministry. My name is David. I'll give you a free notepad. Well, this is all I have. It's a John and Romans, not the full Bible, just John and Romans from the Bible. Thank you so much, sir. Were you one more than that? Well, my brother just passed away. I just, uh, he just passed away, and I, this is my first trip back out. He was my partner. Okay. This is my first day back out. I'm sure. He wandered up to me. That, that was amazing. Sure. Because I, I, I came off the road, because I was, I kind of had a breakdown. He wandered up to me. That was amazing. Interesting. Uh, how'd your brother pass away? Or? Uh, he, he the truck driver, he had a blood clot in his arm. Oh. And, uh, went home and went to sleep and moved and went up to his heart. That's too bad. Yeah, they say over the road, you know, it's good to get out and walk once in a while, otherwise the guy can't get a okay. get from sitting. Okay. Have you ever thought about where you'd spend eternity? I have not. Okay. Uh, Every person can know for sure that they're going to heaven. But there's only one way to know, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, every one of us has transgressed. We've all sinned. You know, the Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. The scripture says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. God tells us what sin is. On the back of that, John and Romans, is the Ten Commandments. Now, a person might think, well, God gave us the Ten Commandments so we could keep them and go to heaven. But none of us have kept them. The scripture says that, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So every one of us has broken God's law if we've lied. The scripture says the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. In other words, you don't have to teach a child to lie. You don't have to teach a child to go steal his neighbor's toys. It's inside of us because we've inherited a corrupted nature and that nature is passed on from generation to generation all the way back to Adam and Eve. They did what they were told not to do in the Garden of Eden. They were not supposed to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when they did, they died spiritually. And that spiritual death has been passed on from generation to generation. The scripture says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So we've, we've all transgressed. And the third commandment says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So when we take God's name in vain, the Bible says it, it's God's enemies that take his name in vain. The reason it says that is because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And so our minds are at war with God. We're enemies in our mind through wicked works with God. The Bible says, when God destroyed the world with a flood, he said that the imagination of man's heart was only evil continually. And so, if we died in this state of condemnation, and if we died in this sinful state, without being forgiven, without being cleansed, the Bible says that we'd have to spend eternity in hell. The wages of sin is death. Death and hell were cast in a lake of fire. This is the second death. We're all going to have to die physically. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. So there's a judgment day coming, and God's going to judge for wrong thoughts, wrong words, wrong deeds. And God doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to punish us for our sins. So He provided a way that we could escape it, the way, a way that we could be delivered from it. And the way that we can be delivered from death is through Christ. See, Jesus kept the law perfectly. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill. Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies concerning him. He fulfilled the law because he always loved his neighbor as himself. He always loved God with all of his heart, mind, soul, and strength. He lived a perfect life. 
That's why he could be a lamb without blemish and without spot. See, the Old Testament, there was all kinds of innocent animals that were slain. But those, those animals, even though they were innocent animals, they could never take away sin. The Bible says the blood of bulls and bullocks can never take away sin. The scripture says without shedding of blood, there's no remission. You can't have forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. And so Christ shed his blood at Calvary. He provided an atonement for sin. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Jesus Christ gave his life. And the Bible says, I have given it to, to thee upon the altar. And the scripture says, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Without the shedding of blood being applied to our hearts, we can never have forgiveness. We can never be cleansed of our sins. We can never know God and be reconciled to God. So Christ paid that penalty. He suffered for us, shed his blood, and then he rose again the third day and he defeated death. And if we will repent and put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, our complete confidence in him, we can have everlasting life. And that's the only way we can have everlasting life. The Bible says that it's that God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. So God requires repentance. But then the scripture also says without faith it is impossible to please Him. And so the Bible says, talks about repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. So we put our complete trust, our complete confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do, we pass from death unto life. We receive God's gift of everlasting life. Now, obviously you've never done that because you said you've never ever thought about the eternal things. But there's no better time than the present. In fact, the scripture says, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. So we don't want to delay because we don't know how much time we have on this earth. We don't know when God's going to call us say your time is up and uh, that's going to happen for every one of us we don't know David said there is but a step between me and death just a step you know when you're going down the road in these semi trucks if another truck veered over into your lane and you hit a, had a head-on collision or if you had a tire blow a front wheel and it caused you to lose control and your death your life could be just taken away just instantly. So, it doesn't, we don't want to procrastinate on salvation. A lot of people, I think, said, well, think, I think they think that they will procrastinate, that maybe there'll be a convenient season, a more convenient season, that they would come to Christ. But there's no better time and no, there is not a more scriptural time than the present. The Bible says the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. So we don't want to delay on salvation. We don't want to delay on coming to Christ. Do you have any questions on... Does that make sense? 
Uh, God has a will for our life. We may not have the power to do what we need to do for God and do the what He asks us to do. But He can give us that strength. He can give us that uh, power. And through a new birth, He can give us that new desire. See, it's through the new birth that God gives new desire. And it's through the Holy Spirit that God gives new power. So we can live a victorious life, but we can only live that through Christ. We yield. That's why the Bible says, Be ye not drunk with wine wherein there is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Because when we're filled with the Spirit, we're being controlled by the Spirit. And He's leading us and directing us and guiding us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you have any other questions? No, sir. That, that, that really help me out. All right, well, the materials I gave you there, did I give you a CD? I didn't give you one? Okay. This is a really good message, two really good messages on there by, by Adrian Rogers. One is called The Value of the Soul, and the other one is called The Final Judgment. And so they're, they're real good messages. You can take your Bible and follow along. And, when he's preaching, if you want, or you can just, you know, listen to it when you go down the road. Like a local church? Or? Well, he's a, pa he's a pastor that has passed away now. He was a pastor in Memphis, Tennessee. So, and then on the inside of this John and Romans, there's an actual gospel track where it just takes you step by step and shows you how you can have eternal life. It's on the back of the, the book uses the scripture. It's a really comfy tonight, honey. I didn't bring my Bible with me. I didn't have a Bible in my truck. And my brother, you know, I got out of that truck. He got a different truck. Too many memories, so I got a different truck. So it's my first time out. We got to start all over. So. Well, I pray that uh, I pray that you'll find a place to in your heart for Christ that you'll receive Him and, and that God will give you safety going down the road. Drive safe and I wish you well. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a good, have a good evening. Thanks.